Hello students, welcome to Shirtback Academy. In our lesson today, we're going to be covering section 3.6 in the ITF Plus course. The topic for this lesson is application, concepts, and uses. Let's begin. Software installation is the downloading of application files from the internet or externally connected devices. Some common external devices would be optical media or USB flash drives. Software applications must be compatible with the operating system version that runs on the computer. Remember there are two different common versions, 32-bit and 64-bit. Local installations will store application files directly on the computer device. Digital copies of all application files will be maintained on the hard drive disks. Remote installations can be used by administrators to enable applications on mobile devices for authorized users. Compatibility is the testing of a software application's ability to run on a certain operating system. Single platform applications will run only on one vendor's operating system. A common single platform example is Apple's Mac OS. Cross-platform applications will run on multiple vendor operating systems. Windows is a common proprietary cross-platform operating system. Applications can run on different versions of Windows. A common open source cross-platform operating system is Linux. Applications will usually come in 32-bit and 64-bit versions. When we test an application, we must make sure that it matches the internal CPU speed. Software licensing are the legal contracts that outline the rules and limitations of how people may use an application. End user license agreements are abbreviated as EULA. End user license agreements are common ways for people to gain permission for software use. Copyright infringement is the unauthorized use, reselling, or accessing of software applications. Cloud licensing is becoming more common for business applications and productivity software platforms to be accessed remotely. There are several licensing types to be familiar with. Single-use software licenses are purchased for an individual home user. A group license is a software purchase for multiple users on a network. These are common for small business or multiple users at the home. Enterprise licenses are large bulk software purchases for medium and large businesses. Finally, subscriptions are software licenses that require the user to pay a monthly or annual fee. Open source software licenses are applications that are freely used and shared by the general public. Public domain are software licenses available on internet websites that do not require any user authentication. Open source application code can be modified and designed for third party use. Copyleft licenses are shareable applications that multiple users can access under a single license. Proprietary licenses are closed source software code. It's specific to a vendor or operating system. A common example is Apple. Copyrights are legal protections that are given to source code that the developer does not make freely available to users. Shrink wraps are pre-packaged software that is specific to vendor or operating system versions. The most popular proprietary license vendor, again, is Apple. It uses it for both its desktop Mac OS and mobile device iOS platforms. Product keys are software application passwords that verify that licensed users are accessing the program. Activation is the initial entry of product keys into the software. The product keys may come included in prepackaged software 
or emailed from a downloaded application. Decryption keys are the passwords needed to decode and open encrypted application data. End user licensing agreements are legal contracts between the software developer and the end user. It defines the way the applications are accessible to the user. Click-throughs are user agreements in strictly digital form that are common on websites and captive portals. Captures are security boxes that will require the user to identify a specific image type. Liability is determining if a user is at fault when the software negatively impacts another person. That will conclude this lesson and Module 3. If you have any questions about the contents of this lesson, please review the course notes and exam objectives for Section 3.6. In our next lesson, we will begin Module 4, Software Development, and Section 4.1 programming language types. We thank you for following along in the video. We will see you in the next one. Enjoy the rest of your day everyone.